All right, welcome back for a ranked multiplayer match. We're doing a replay cast here, and we're playing as Corn. We are matched up against Zinch, and we are on the Silver Spire. So as far as our starting army, we've got a Chaos Lord of Corn. He is on foot. We've got uh, three squads of Chaos Warriors with halberds. We've got two squads of Bloodletters and the Brutes of the Hound. It's the Regiments of Renown Marauder Berserkers. And then we've also got two Blood Reapers who are basically, I think they're completely stripped down, except, they, I think they're actually completely stripped down, uh, other than, yeah, they have Deadly Onslaught. So I brought Deadly Onslaught because I wanted them to have a little bit more um, impact on the infantry fight. I wasn't sure how well the Blood Reapers were going to do, so that was kind of what I was thinking about in my build. Uh, as far as my opponent, so he's got Kairos Fate Weaver as his lore, three squads of Chaos Warriors of Zinch. Pink Horrors and the Sour Guts, which is the Regiments of Renown, Pink Horrors of Zinch, and then he's got a Mutilith, uh, Mutilith Vortex Beast. So that's what our opponent has. I'm going to fast forward a little bit on the approach. Now immediately coming out, you can see my opponent has some Skirmish Cavalry. So I brought out uh, Chaos Warhounds. I waited until they got firing range. You see they just got a single volley off. As soon as they got in range, I sent those Warhounds out. Now these guys have 95 speed and the Marauder Horsemen have 90 speed. So very close there. It's going to take them some time to catch up. And unfortunately, they're going to take some Javelins. You see them are already taking a decent amount of damage on the approach. Vortex Beast going off on the flank. Kairos is kind of just floating ahead. Um, actually don't fully know everything he brought. So you got Regrowth, Zinch Firestorm, Blue Fire. Okay, I'm not going to get into all the other uh, items and whatnot that he has, but Skirmish Cav is going to be a problem for me. Now, I ran the Warhounds over into the woods because I didn't want to continue chasing these guys into the heavy infantry, and I also didn't want to continue taking a bunch of free uh, volleys from the missiles, so I ran them into the woods so they could at least block some of the projectiles. Blue Fire going down on the Brutes of the Hound. Not a ton of damage, and now these guys are going to go off and threaten point one. So you can see my opponent brought on some Marauders. Looks like, can't tell if they're, no, no attack order on them, I don't believe. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. But uh, basically I set up the Chaos Warriors with Halberds to screen on the front. I wasn't sure what he was gonna do with this um, Needle of Vortex Beast, but the Halberds are so slow. And this thing actually has some decent pace on it, um, especially given how chunky it is. So I wanted to be able to respond to that and not give him a free roam charging in. I'm hiding the Blood Reapers and my Lord back here. And now we're going to pull the Halberds back, run the Blood Letters forward, and then take a good exchange here. So we've got a Blood Reaper and Blood Letters jumping into the Chaos Warriors. And um, that's going to be a decent trade for us. Brutes of the Hound are coming over here in the back. Um, we've got Blood Letters coming to swap places with these Halberds. And these guys are just going to sit and take the um, Chaos Warriors up front. Now, these guys are meant to be anti-large, but they do have armor piercing, so they will still do okay against the Chaos Warriors. Again, on this side, pulling the Halberds back and letting the Bloodletters go in and take a better engagement. And luckily, I haven't taken too much bad shooting from the um, Pinks. Brought some Chariots on from the, uh, the side point. Dogs are getting chased off by the Marauders, unfortunately. Kairos is, looks like he's dropped some spells. He's got a blue fire coming down. Looks like he aimed that at my lord, but luckily he's soaked in and saturated in the infantry. And this is this is kind of what I was thinking about when I brought the, the lord and the two blood reapers on foot, was that I could soak them into the infantry exchange and not get blown away um, by some of the bigger damage dealers on the Zinch roster. Like, uh, I don't know, let's say Screamers are good armor-piercing anti-large troops. Uh, Zangor is matched up against Casper with Halbers over here. Blood Letters and the Blood Reaper did did away with these Chaos Warriors pretty quickly. Um, our Lord and these forces over here are doing okay. Chariots are cycle charging, starting to take a little bit of chip damage. Vortex uh, Beast is charging into the Chaos Warriors. I think it originally was trying to get on top of the Hounds, but I've been chasing after him with the uh, Chaos Warriors with Halberds, and then we've also got Flesh Hounds coming over here. Honestly, probably not the best idea on my part. Flush Hounds do not want to be fighting against an anti-large unit. He's got armor piercing, so they're kind of not really rewarding that since they have low armor. They have 30 armor. Um, but still, I, I should just let the Halberds do their thing. Pink's firing in. They're starting to 
deal some significant damage to the halberds who already took a bit of a beating from the chaos warriors but nothing too crazy um chariot continuing to cycle charge doesn't want to be running into the marauder horsemen because they're, he's going to get trapped up uh just with a massive cavalry and then they're just going to be tossing javelins into those guys while they're stuck you can see this squad over here got uh got routed off the screamers are also contributing to that roots of the hound are now going to be fighting against the zangors and I think there is, what is in here? There's some Chaos Warriors still in the mix. So the Bruce and Hound are going to struggle a little bit against those armor values, but, you know, they still have pretty good weapon strength and, and uh, anti infantry stats. Lord um, of Corn and Blood Reaper are over here. They were doing some damage against the Sour Guts. Now they're going to be fighting against some Marauders. The Chariots are still cycle charging. See over on this side, Zangors and Halberds have been a pretty even fight. Kairos is diving in to do some assistance here. The interesting thing about playing a Zinch is like when you have a Lord like this, even if they're diving into an unfavorable engagement, they have that shield cushion. So you can dive in and kind of fight until your shield goes down and then just back out and you wouldn't have lost any effective health. Um, you can just wait for it to regen. So like I said, Flesh Hounds probably wasn't the best choice keeping them in this combat over here. They, they got... Um, be pretty bad and the vortex what beast although it took a lot of damage to chase the hounds and the uh, chaos with the halberds off the field luckily we've got a pretty good infantry blob over here we have halberds we have minotaurs that we brought on for some, some better anti-infantry presence um, especially with some pace is one of the advantages that the minotaurs are going to give and uh, blood reapers or, or lord are all in the mix there these hounds actually did not get chased off of point one they they ended up routing right to the end here so I was able to bring them back around the Marauders and charge them into the Sour Guts and disrupt the shooting a little bit. Outside of that, we got some Chaos Warriors fleeing off my opponent. These Zangors and uh, and Chaos Warriors with the Halberds, just neither of them can really deal enough damage um, to, to knock each other out. I'm actually surprised how close this has been. The Halberds are kind of getting a bit of an edge because of the armor piercing. The Zangors are getting a bit of an edge because they just have better combat stats. And I think they might have more models. Could be wrong on that. Yeah, I guess I am wrong on that, but I think Zangor are generally going to be better um, damage dealers. But you know, the, the Halbers have good armor. They're corn warriors, so corn gets better armor on all their stuff. And now we're bringing in the big boy. So this is a unit I have not used much, if at all, and I wanted to see if I can um, find a way to make him work in this situation. So I figure they've got Kairos, they've got um, cavalry. You know, kind of getting into the engagements here in melee. Yeah, they're out of ammunition, so they're kind of forced to. And they've got the Mutal of Vortex Beast. So I wanted to see if I could make this um, Blood Brute Behemoth work. You see his movement animation got disrupted because he was going after Kairos, but Kairos lifted off, so now he stopped. But I'm going to send him out to the Mutal X. Um, I keep calling him Mutal X. Mutal of Vortex Beast. Blood Reaper getting uh, taken out over there by the Zangors. Zangors are going to deal decent against him. He's a demonic unit, the Blood Reaper. So his physical resist gets negated by their magical attack. And um, these guys are meant to fight against low low armored troops. The Blood Reapers are pretty low armored. Um, so either way, we're chasing a lot of troops off. These Marauder Horsemen are running. The uh, Blood Group Behemoth is now matched up against the Vortex Beast. We're getting some Halberds over to help. Trying to force past the um, Marauders past there, but I think they ended up getting... The last model got killed, or they got chased off. I think they're unbreakable, so it must have been the last model, model got killed. Uh, Blood Reaper and my Lord are coming in to jump on top of him as well. Um, they should be going after the, the infantry, honestly. Although I was trying to deal damage to this thing quickly, it's probably better if I get them over here and, and let the uh, Behemoth deal with him. Because he's just got the health advantage, he's got regen. And I actually don't know if the, if the Vortex Beast has any kind of regen. Uh, looks like no. So anyways, more Flesh Hounds coming on. The Flesh Hounds, I, I kind of was feeling like I didn't bring enough pace here. You see my opponent, he's got Chaos Knights coming on. The Blood Brute Behemoth is going to have to deal with them. And maybe he's going to have not as easy of a time because these guys have good armor on them. Um, but they also have decent damage and this guy is lightly armored. And he's also dealing with the squad of Marauder Horsemen with Zine. So I got to figure out a way that I can deal with these skirmish cavalry and that's one thing I struggled with in this matchup was how do I deal with the skirmish cavalry when I I think the only really fast units I brought was one squad of warhounds and one squad of flesh hounds I'll have to check the my troops set up after that but behemoth is going to charge into the marauder horsemen now because the calf knights are pulling back 
I guess he's trying to get the shield back on those guys, so um, I don't know if he's got them on guard mode. It seems like they're still firing even though they're locked in this melee. Our Lord is luckily still pretty healthy. One of the Blood Reapers from the beginning is very healthy. Minotaurs are helping against the Chaos Warriors. This is the type of matchup that the um, Minotaurs really want to be in. Ideally, they have some kind of um, cheap infantry or hounds or something like that in the mix to soak up some of the damage so the Minotaurs are not taking all the attacks. But um, doing decently well nonetheless. They're supported by the Lord and the Blood Reaper anyways. And Kairos, his shield is going down. So you see my opponent playing with that shield. So he's going to run back, try to lift off, and uh, get the Flesh Hounds off of him now that he's starting to lose some of his actual health pool. More Zangors coming on. So again, Minotaurs, Chaos Lord, who's got his, he's got the dual axes. He's got his bonus for his infantry. And the Blood Reaper, who has armor piercing and anti-infantry against Zangors, who have 80 armor in our infantry. So all, all good trades in this um, part of the map. The Warhounds were able to jump on top of the Marauders. I summoned them on to try to help out the Blood Brute Behemoth so he wouldn't have to fight you know, the Skirmish Cat and the Chaos Knights while he soaked up in these guys. And so now we got like a battle of health pools. So can the Blood Brute Behemoth fight through these, these heavy cavalry um, with its regen and whatnot while they've got it surrounded and luckily their support are, are uh, being chased off by the Hounds. So, Flesh Hounds still following after Kairos. You see he got a regrowth on himself. He's got Oracle of Eternity, so he's got that um, ward save, 44% ward, uh, ward save. That is incredible. Um, Chaos Warriors of Corn with Halberds coming in to get on top of him. He dropped some kind of explosion, but uh, looks like it didn't have much armor piercing value on it because they barely took any damage. That might be a flame storm, so these guys are not going to like that. But luckily, I got the Hounds away. They're going to be helping the Behemoths chase down the Chaos Knights. And over here, we've just got a big blob fight. So again, uh, Minotaurs are jumping on top of the pink. This is one of the things the Minotaurs were giving me that units like Bloodletters were not giving me. These guys have mass. So if they're, if they're locked into an infantry engagement and then some pinks come out, I can kind of force path through the infantry because these are big boys. And they you know plow through and get on top of the shooting in the back so they don't have free reign. So Minotaurs and Chaos Chariots chasing these guys down my lord and the blood reaper are chasing off the marauders and he's bringing on some more skirmishers and some more heavy infantry so in the backfield the behemoth and the hounds were able to take out the chaos knights these guys are running back and i guess they're chasing these marauder horsemen off i will note that i i had a delay in capturing point three i i honestly when i sent that warhounds up to point one because my opponent didn't have anything over here early i forgot that i needed to capture my own home point and you see that in the um, the victory point situation. I'm over doubled up right now. And now I'm like trying to scrap and, and just hold on to this. And I'm like, okay, is this a triple cap situation? I'm trying to watch the battle and uh, figure out the math in my head. Generally speaking, the, the simplest way you can think of it is like if the opponent has a thousand and you have 500, you're gonna need a triple cap. Um, and so that's, that's what we're close to. And so now I'm thinking about that and I'm like, all right, I really got to make sure I take good engagements and like, do I need to force things? Do I not need to force things? You know what I mean? Given given how much time my opponent has and um, the capture weight that he has pouring towards point two. He's got horsemen. He's got chaos warriors. He's got marauders. Two squads of marauders. He's got Zangors and screamers on the way. The screamers will not contribute to capture weight, but they'll help deal with things like my chariots. So I'm like, all right, I need to hold point two and then consider what the next move is to make sure I keep point three and threaten point one. Kairos still floating around, dropping blue fires, firestorms, stuff like that. You see he's he's doing a really good job of taking advantage of the shield. Dive in, fight a little bit, you know, contribute to combat. I think he's he terror causing. Yep, he's a terror causing monster. Float around while his shield regenerates, come back in, and then um, see what he can do. So we got another squad of Bloodletters. I'm continuing to bring on Chariots because I figured the Chariots are going to be good at plowing through Zangors, Marauders, and even Chaos Warriors somewhat, even though these guys don't have much armor piercing value. And um, I'll just have to keep using them that way and try to avoid them getting jumped by Screamers. So it's really going to be the job of the Flesh Hounds and of the Warhounds to try to get Screamers off of the Chariot. You can see I got a Blood Shrine over here. There was a lot of combat going on here when I brought this thing on. I was hoping I could get it on and kind of use it as a um, as a blob fight assist because it's got this totem of endless bloodletting, gives you melee attack and leadership. 
and um, as long as it's fighting, it also has some HP regen, so it gives some sustainability. It also has encourage, so it gives some leadership to guys in case my lord goes off and is fighting on a different part of the battlefield. Now it's fighting against screamers, which it does not want to be doing, but luckily the blood group behemoth is over here helping to get these guys off. And um, these guys, although they're anti-large, again, their armor piercing value, this is something I probably harp on a lot, their armor piercing value is not being put to great effect against the behemoth like it is when, when they're fighting against the blood shrine, who has much higher armor value. So um, our halberds are starting to go down to the zangors. But we've got Chariots charging in to kind of punish them, and um, we'll see what he ends up doing with Kairos. He's got pretty good shield on him right now. And uh, Chaos Warhounds looking to go support and get on top of these Marauder Horsemen. Got to watch out for the Zangors. That's why you see I'm taking this angle over here on the outside. I don't want to. I don't want to just right click on them and have them run in here because it's making an easy job for my opponent to uh, screen them off. So we'll see if we can get on top of them without the Zangors. And looks like I end up running into that, so that is unfortunate. They're they're gonna go down. They're gonna get slaughtered by Zangors. But uh, luckily, our Lord and these Blood Letters are still over here dealing well with this squad of Zangors. We've got some chariots and a fresh Blood Reaper coming out on the field. Uh, we also have some Minotaurs coming. This is gonna be the anti-infantry variant, not the great weapon variant, who are a little bit better against um, large units. Chariots over here still cycle charging. The, excuse me, the Blood Shrine, man, this guy's doing the old spinneroo. Uh, the Blood Shrine is jumping on top of Zangors, which is going to be a fun, fun battle for him because he likes fighting armored infantry, and these guys do not want to be fighting a large target. And um, the Blood Brute is going to be in there, mostly to provide some terror. I had thought about, should I float him around and kind of track Kairos with him? But I wanted to get these infantry off the field because I, I realized I need to get his capture weight type units off the field. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to push downhill if I need to. Now, you can see my opponent needs about 300 points of victory uh, tickets, and I need about 600. Um, so I think it might be triple cap situation. And again, like I said before, I was kind of trying to keep an eye on that and like calculate it and not stare at it too long while also managing the battlefield because you see on the value trading, we're very close. And my opponent has some healing because of the regrowth on uh, Kairos, so things are probably dead even uh, with the healing taken into account. Uh, we got a squad of horsemen charging over here, still doing some skirmishing. Luckily, we got flesh hounds coming on from the side. They're going to be coming out of that vanguard point, which has kind of been one of my favorite things on this map, is using this, this vanguard point, because a lot of times people are looking to see where you're coming from, your main deployment zone, and uh, sometimes you can, get, you can get people off guard with this point. So Minotaur is fighting against uh, Marauder Horsemen. Not the best use of them, but these horsemen do not want to be fighting here. And you can see they're getting smashed even though this is the anti-infantry variant. They're just getting smashed by these Minotaurs. Blood Shrine is going to come in and scare them off. There they go. And now we've got some Chariots sitting on point one. And I figured, you know, I have, I have Flesh Hounds on the field. I have the Blood Brute on the field. Um, I have these Warhounds over here. So if he brings on Skirmish Cap, I'm going to be able to chase them off. So he doesn't have too many good options for getting down here and getting capture weight on here. If he tries to send a decent capture weight unit like a squad of infantry, I can just plow through them with the Chaos Chariots. And these guys are fast, so they were, they were basically the quickest way I could get back onto that point. So that's why I sent them back there. Everybody else is kind of participating and just pushing unified in this area back towards his reinforcements so he can't get guys to the uh, capture points. Kairos floating above. I'm not sure what his winds of magic look like at this point, but there we go. He uh, he conceded, and I guess he figured he wasn't going to be able to push through what I had on the field. So very fun match, pretty fast paced, um, very even skill skill level, I'd say, between me and that guy. And uh, yeah, just a close one overall. So let's take a quick look at the stats here. So Chaos Lord came out with 1300 value, decent. Uh, Brutes of the Hound didn't do great. Blood Reapers both paid for themselves. I think these guys cost about 700. I think one of them was a resummon. Maybe both of them were resummons, but they did decent. Um, let's see, the Halberds did all right. I think one of these squads was the one that got on top of the Vortex Beast. Blood Reapers, one squad did amazing, other squad not as much. But uh, one of these was resummon. So there's that. Blood Brute Behemoth, uh, 
got a lot of value. Now this guy cost 20, 2550, I believe. So he paid for himself. Probably still had a little bit more to give. Uh, Minotaurs did very good. I think they were potentially double summon. So they literally broke even if they were a double summon. Um, let's see what else. Great weapons didn't come on from the Minotaurs. Uh, Blood Shrine did decent, especially it didn't get much play. And it ended up fighting things like Screamers and, and whatnot, so um, didn't really get a good sample size of, of this thing fighting on the field for a good duration, but it was fun to bring it on. I, I try to mix up the units every once in a while and use stuff that I haven't been using. Cherish did good. Um, I, felt, I felt decent about them, although they don't have crazy value. They were just plowing up the infantry formation and scattering guys and making them fight ineffectively. Flesh Hounds and Warhounds did very good. Um, they were really harassing the skirmish cavalry, which was one of the things that was going to be a problem for me if I did not have these guys. But like I said before, only one squad of Flesh Hounds, only one squad of Warhounds. If I were to redo this roster, I'd probably cut either one of the squads of Chariots, um, maybe even go with the Gore Beast Chariot and then bring another Warhound or something like that. But um, as far as my opponent, Kairos, 2,000 value. I don't know much how, how much he would have cost with the spells that he brought, but decent. Vortex Beast did very good, 3,200 value. I'm not sure how much he cost, but, you know, I'm sure it's... I would not imagine it's more than that. Chaos Warriors did all right. Pinks did decent. Um, Chaos Knights didn't do great. They they got in a bad matchup with the um, Blood Brute Behemoth. So, Word Spawn never came on. Zangors were actually pretty good. Skirmish Cab did decent, Screamers did alright, and Marauders were kind of what you'd expect. So, again, very well played to my opponent. It was a fun matchup. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.